Welcome back to the Prepare Like a Pro live chat Sunday show. My name is Jack McLean. I'm the host. And today I am going to debrief last week's live chats with Matthew McGregor, the AFL Player Association sports psychologist. I was lucky enough to work with Matt at Hawthorne Football Club. He's recently left Hawthorne and now doing big things with the PA as well as his own business in community clubs, working with uh, community sports like football clubs. Also, um, debriefing the live chat with Rebecca Alcop, who's recently just finished working at Melbourne Football Club, uh, who won the Premiership in this year, as well as she's now working at Western Force and back working at universities at Monash and La Trobe. So I'll dive into a little bit more information about those chats in a little while. I'll be talking about our recent blog posts about the Corfield Gamerians Football Club and Nicholas Rule, who's looking after our men's program, and Jordan Love, who's looking after our senior women's program there. Uh, we've got a blog post about the Glenorchy Football Club and their history, and our certainly initiating intern there, Tom Cleary. So head over to our website, capellacpro.com, to read those blogs. Well, I'll be discussing our power tip for this week, which is going to be about a strength training for football. Um, how to improve it in the gym, but then also how to transfer it onto the field and the importance of wrestling and combat and boxing drills. Uh, a q and I'll be going, heading over to Instagram shortly to answer any questions. So if you're on our Instagram, you can send us through questions via direct message throughout the week and every Sunday at 6 p.m. I'll answer those questions. And of course, if you tune in live, you can send your questions in there too. I've had a few people email through their questions uh, from listening in on the podcast that's uh, another way that you can send in your questions as well so whatever your problem is at the moment with your training or maybe as a strength and conditioning coach and you feel that i can uh, add um, some value or i can help you in that regard feel free to send in your question and hopefully i can solve your problem for you or at least help you get on the right track and that will be it, as well as announcing, of course, the upcoming live chats. Uh, so we've got Kevin Ball on the podcast. Uh, that's going to be on Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. He is a biomechanist. Um, I had the pleasure of, of uh, being in his class at Victoria University, and he's a real expert when it comes to kicking analysis from a biomechanics point of view, as well as how to improve kicking. He worked at Fremantle. Dockers as an assistant coach there, so he, he understands the research uh, working at Vic Uni, and he has for a number of years now, but he also understands how to implement that information uh, and teach and coach it. So really looking forward to catching up with Kev. Uh, he's an expert on this topic, and it'll be great to share his journey and story as well. So to tune in for that live episode, that will be on 8.30 p.m. on Tuesday. Uh, our podcast to be released this week will be Rebecca Alcock, who's just recently finished at the Melbourne Football Club as a performance dietitian. Uh, her podcast episode will be released on Tuesday. And then on Friday, Dylan Shiel, the Gun Essendon Midfielders episode will be released. Um, so two awesome episodes. Hope you guys love those episodes and you get a lot of takeaways from it. And um, you know, we'll be releasing on our socials like we do uh, the night before. So Monday night, you can watch a six minute highlights episode of Rebecca's interview on our YouTube channel. And Thursday night, you can watch a six minute uh, jam packed of highlights from the Dylan Shield uh, interview. Okay, let's get into the debrief. So with Matthew McGregor, um, he's a sports psychologist. It was a unbelievable chat. We, we dived into his philosophy when it comes down to working with elite athletes, he's worked with Olympic athletes, Olympic teams, uh, obviously AFL teams and numerous uh, different AFL teams, not just Hawthorne. And we talked about the importance of um, mental well-being and mental health, and then also focusing on performance. Um, so he said that more recently, the athletes that he works with are much more in tune with their mental health now um, compared to 10, 20 years ago. Um, where now they're uh, in an understanding that your mental well-being, your mental health has a direct correlation with your, with your performance and they're not separate. So we, we talked about that topic a fair bit. We talked about obviously his journey throughout the ranks. It wasn't a, a common, um, a common full-time job when he started studying sports psychology. So he talked about how he worked his way up 
in the industry uh, and the importance of building your network base um, at events, um, calling out to people, catching up with people with coffee, um, and yeah, just building your network as your career grows to build opportunity. Uh, we discussed the challenges of working in elite sport um, and mainly around the period where he was involved in the Australian cricket team when Phil Hughes died. Um, so we talked about how dealing with that from a personal point of view and the coping strategies he did to help himself deal with such a tragic um, and traumatic experience, but also for the team as well that were leaning on him. Um, so that was yes, hugely um, impactful for, for those that are potentially going through a bit of a challenging time. Definitely recommend listening to this podcast. There's some takeaways that you can do to help cope during challenging times from an expert in, in it being Matt being a psychologist. Um, we also discussed the the highs as well. So celebrating the wins and um, Matt shares his passion for um, seeing people that will work really hard and, and it might take a little bit longer for them to get the results, uh, actually achieve them and, and see them do that on the field is something that he loves. So he's, as he mentioned, a real sports nuffy and, and loves working in performance. And then uh, we also finished up in the work that he's more currently now doing with the business and they're about to work in community clubs as well. So it's something to watch this space and we'll share it in the show notes as soon as we hear um, the work he's doing in the private sector. That episode at the moment is on our YouTube channel, so you can watch the whole um, live chat recording there. Otherwise, we'll post the podcast recording in the next couple of weeks. Uh, our chat with Rebecca Alcock, who is now working at Western Force and uh, La Trobe University in the new year. Um, that was a great chat sharing her story. Um, she's done a hell of a lot of research when it comes to nutrition and did her, completed her PhD on um, the subject as well for maintaining and improving your um, ability to re to recover using uh, collagen, uh, either from bone broths or supplements, and the importance that can have to healing um, your body, whether it be tendons, ligaments, muscles, during a rehabilitation plan or just for optimal recovery benefits. Um, so that was a hugely informative chat. And for those interested in improving their nutrition game, definitely recommend listening to this one. Um, Rebecca shares a lot of her research as well as how to implement that research for football. So um, recommend listening. And that will be on YouTube channel. Like all our live chats, the episodes you can watch the recordings there. They live on, on our YouTube channel in the um, Prepare Like a Pro live chats playlist. And then we'll post the podcast in the next few weeks. Actually, this one's going to be released on Tuesday. So in the podcast world, being when you listen to that, it's probably already uh, up and running. You can list straight into that episode. Our upcoming podcast, Dylan Shield, um, obviously needs no introduction. Gun midfield for Eston. We shared his story. He was one of the 12 players that got picked up at GWS at 17 years of age. So we talked about the different dynamics of that, leaving home and integrating into a full-time life style as an athlete at a young age and uh, the different progressions that he's had in different philosophies working at GWS compared to Essendon. And um, we have shared his story on what's worked for, for him and also what hasn't worked and what his learnings and lessons have been along the way um, and what his recommendations are for developing footballers. Um, he said that he, uh, uh, during his uh, development, uh, he worked incredibly hard and at times overworked himself and that led to some injuries. Um, whereas notice now a couple of the players that actually came from the COVID year were due to COVID, they weren't able to play as much, uh, but they've actually been able to go into the their first AFL season injury-free and transition really, really well because they weren't overworked that, that draft year playing multiple games each week um, and then pushing your body to limit for, for the combine. So, um, yeah, really... Awesome to catch up with Dylan, discuss his philosophy around high performance and share his story and what he's done to get to where he is now. So you can listen to that episode on Friday. In terms of our power tip, strength training for football, a um, couple of basic tips that I'd give around this topic. You want to make sure that you've, you're doing the fundamental movements uh, in the gym. So the first one being um, you're doing plenty of pulling work. Um, pulling like chin-ups, single arm rows. Um, there usually be a gripping exercise involved that. Make sure that you grip the bar or dumbbell as hard as you can. Um, 
obviously you will need a pacer for for sets of maybe more than six reps um you won't be holding it maximally but making sure that the, the bar isn't slipping into the fingertips but you're keeping it as in your palm as best as you can so you're really recruiting a lot of muscle mass around your forearms um, and that will also allow you to improve your forearm strength which is really really important and finger strength for um, being able to grab those tackles and grab the jumper with strength rather than it being um, shrugged off uh, from a uh, combat point of view, make sure that you're getting in wrestling work, dedicated wrestling work, whether you're seeing a wrestling trainer outside of the club or a, a strength conditioning coach or a football coach at the club is helping you with your tackling technique uh, and you're doing grappling, you're applying that strength you're building in the gym onto the field is really, really important. Um, I've definitely seen uh, and experienced footballers that are incredibly strong in the gym, but they, they haven't practiced the skill of it on the on the field. and um, through things like boxing, wrestling training, um, you'll be able to really transfer that skill in the specific tasks of tackling. So practicing tackling uh, is really, really important for your strength on the field, as well as distracting the ball off other players key and, not, and then preventing players from distracting you, practicing your fend-offs, hitting the weaker parts of the body, um, and yeah, trying this, phys you know, this physicality, being aggressive as well and practicing that and knowing how to uh, harness that aggression uh, and not going over the top with it, of course, being able to manage it, um, but bringing that intensity into your into your tackle work is really, really important. Um, so that's an important thing to, to note down. You can't just focus at your, your um, strength in the gym and then not practice on the field. You won't get the uh, optimal results. Make sure you're doing both. In terms of leg strength, the squats and the deadlifts are the best, so um, lifting heavy off the ground and, Lifting heavy with the bar on your back uh, are great ways to improve your maximal strength in your legs, where you'll be able to hold your ground a lot better on the field. Um, you'll be a lot harder to tackle because you'll have that trunk strength through your core and your legs um, through, through those big compound lifts. Um, and really important from a technical point of view that you brace well. So you're moving in good posture, you're expanding your abdomen area um, before focusing on your leg drive with the squat as well as the dead. So set, yeah, set yourself up for success by preparing for the lift before you've uh, even started bending the knees and using the legs. You want to make sure you, your trunk's in a good position with those big lifts. Bench press is another one to help with things like fending off and, and being able to create space by using your upper body strength. Um, dumbbell bench press, bench press, push-ups, ring push-ups, any of these sort of pressing motions can help you keep distance from your opponents. Um, and shrug off tackle uh, and practicing some rotational power work as well. So um, check out the YouTube uh, playlist on the Propelica Pro channel where we've got a power uh, playlist there. And you can see a lot of wood chops and rotational throws uh, using medicine balls. And that's really, really important practicing the use of your ankle, hip and shoulders and rotating all as one unit. Uh, is really, really important uh, to help you have that power through the hips on the field. Uh, plenty of core work, so anti-rotation uh, and anti-extension type of drills are, are fundamentals when it comes to core training. So anti-rotation, think like a power-off press uh, where we're pressing the band out and we want to try and prevent the hips from rotating uh, while we're doing it. So we're maintaining strength through our legs and through our trunk to keep our shoulders and hips square while the band is increasing in resistance. Um, and then for anti-extension, you can use like the ab wheel or, or ring rollouts, barbell rollouts is a great drill to build that strength through the trunk where you're preventing extending through your lower back. Uh, that's really, really important for being able to hold your position in a, in a contest, particularly marking contest. Uh, if someone's weak through the core and they get pushed, they might get into extension or get into flexion. Um, and whereas if you're strong through the trunk and be able to maintain a better shape and better position uh, and be able to dictate how they um, the play a lot better. Um, so they're the fundamentals when it comes to strength training. Um, and that's our power tip for this week. And we'll, we'll, I'll give a power tip every week uh, to help you guys with your development. And if you have any questions around this power tip, feel free to email us at jack at preparelikeapro.com. Okay, we're gonna head over to Instagram now to answer your questions for the week. There's three that have come through. There might be a couple more that come live. Uh, 
All right. We are live now from Instagram. So if you have any questions and you're listening in, feel free to hit the question button at the bottom of your screen and I will answer those questions as best as I can. The first question is from Alex and it's around what age should I start taking supplements? Uh, I, I would I would recommend supplements would be something that you focus on once your nutrition is down pat. So ideally you're working with a sports dietitian at, the, at your football club um, on how you can improve your nutrition for the week leading up to game day, um, but also post game day for your recovery. Um, so hydration, um, making sure that you're well hydrated leading up to your training sessions, especially now that we're getting into summer is an important one. Um, making sure you're getting plenty of leafy greens and plenty of color out of your food is another big rock when it comes to nutrition. Um, but yeah, speak to your dietitian, start practicing some recipes. Uh, supplements really wouldn't be something that I would recommend spending your money on until your, uh, your weekly reg regime with your food is in a really, really good place. Uh, and then you want to think about your, your goals as well and how that can apply to your goals. So, um, if your football club doesn't have a dietitian, then um, you can reach out to one um, and feel free to uh, message us and we can hook you up with, we've had a few of the sports dietitians uh, on the podcast um, and some of them might have some availability for you in the clinic, so more than happy to refer. So just direct, direct message us on Instagram. But in general, um, yeah, supplements wouldn't be something that I would spend your money on um, as yet spend time and energy on on improving your food intake first the next question is from ben how often should i be lifting weights uh, good question ben it largely depends on what your schedule looks like in terms of sport and competition um, so we'll, we'll look we'll work around your strength program around when are you competing um, and we want to make sure that we're not uh, doing too much leading up to game day so um if you've got no competition on and you're in your off season uh, and you're not playing any sports, then we can get a bit more out. Like typically we'll have two upper body strength sessions, one total body session, and then one lower body session. So there's four sessions a week. Sometimes depending on the player's uh, goals and their individual needs, we might have an extra lower body session and take out the total body session. Uh, and we might have an up, another upper body session as well. So for some players, as part of their get a better plan, they might have an upper body session the day before a game um, right. where other players are focusing more on recovery. Um, so, yeah, there'll be an individual focus, but anywhere between three to four strength sessions a week is pretty typical for footballers. Uh, and then obviously the age that you're at, you want to make sure that you're moving really, really well. If you're new to the gym, focus more on technique rather than intensity. Um, so focusing on slowing the movement down, make sure you're in good control and move through range. We call it lengthening is strengthening and that's what we want to try and improve. So then your ability to pick up ground balls really swiftly and fluidly um, and things like change of direction, um, your ability to jump uh, and maintain a good athletic position um, will all be in a good place if you're moving really, really well uh, and you're able to control the movement and move through range of motion. Uh, is a big rock. So get those areas down pat first and that will set you up. It'll pay dividends for later on. Um, once you've got those fundamental movement patterns, then you can start to add good intensity. But great question, Ben, and hopefully that answer helps. If you want a little bit more detail, feel free to direct message us and um, we can ask you a couple, couple of questions um, and give you a bit more information on that topic that's relevant to your week. Next question is from Sarah, and this is our last one. So if you tuned in and you've got any questions, tuned into the live chat or those listening to the podcast uh, live on our YouTube channel, send through via the chat box, and I'm happy to answer a couple more questions. But otherwise, we'll wrap it up. This is our last one from Sarah. What should I do to improve my running endurance? Well, we want to try and make sure that you, you, you're doing some aerobic capacity work, so doing longer efforts. Um, can be one way. Another way is over time, reducing your rest periods between efforts. So let's say you're doing five 200 meters um, efforts and you're aiming for 35 second reps and maybe you're giving us, you're going on the minutes, you're having 25 seconds rest. After a couple of weeks of doing that, you might shave those five 200s down. You're still trying to hit your 35 second rep because we're not doing high speed effort. We're just more working on your endurance, but the rest period is what you've changed. So you progressively overload the body, 
by resting uh, less. So the density of the of the exercise uh, is higher, which will change the stimulus and, and, and ultimately we need to change the stimulus to be able to keep the body improving. So let's say you're resting 25 seconds, now we might be resting 15 seconds every rep. Uh, and doing that over a long period of time, uh, frequency is really, really important. So making sure you're getting at least three running sessions a week. Um, if you're only doing two up to go to three at times of, of program four for footballers that really need to focus on their aerobic capacity, it might be leading up to a, a draft combine and we're six weeks away, eight weeks away, um, up into four. Um, but in general, three is probably where for the most off-season, pre-season programs will will recommend. And you'll have one aerobic, more volume-based day um, and then one more threshold base. So where you're running at above your average speed that you do for your 2K type trial. So making sure you get those two. The third session of the week is more speed, high intensity and repeat speed based, um, which is also really, really important and, and will help your endurance um, by doing repeat high intensity efforts, which is what football is. Um, so making sure you got those three down pat each week. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you have any questions, just hit us up on Instagram via the direct message or you can email us at jacketprepareliceapro.com. Okay, so that's it for this week. We, If you want to uh, listen to the um, Kevin Ball live chat, remember that's on at 8.30 p.m. on Tuesday. That's our only live interview for this week. Our two podcasts are going to be on with Rebecca Alcock on Tuesday, who recently just finished at Melbourne Football Club and is working at Western United in the A-League. And then we have Dylan Shiel, the Essendon midfielder. That podcast will be released on Friday. Have a great week, guys. I'll see you on the next episode.